Most of you guys know Russell Brand is in big, big trouble. This Channel 4 documentary came out the other day that essentially revealed that Russell Brand had allegedly sexually assaulted a couple of women and maybe allegedly potentially raped somebody and obviously since then it's been a big story here in the uk and around the world because of Ra russell brand's i guess reinvention over the last few years and how he's kind of turned his kind of life around for these kind of allegations to come back up again they kind of remind people of how he was in the past and they're also a bit of a shock to the system because some people only remember the russell brand that we know and now from the stuff that he does on youtube so it's been a real big kind of shock to the system for everybody involved but one thing i don't agree with because i think you know it's fairly you are in your right to like question the timing of why this came out because it does seem a bit suspect that it's all kind of coordinated at once um maybe there is something involving super junk super injunctions and shit but i haven't really heard anybody who's part of the whole investigation who's part of the documentary absolutely stipulate that the reason why they're talking about this now is because the super injunctions time limits have basically gone i'm not too sure i haven't heard it but you know some of these platforms some of these channels love to kind of masquerade like they're helping the victims but they're actually doing it for their own pockets for their own viewerships and engagements because i'm sure this has been one of the biggest hits on channel four since whenever or probably forever and they're obviously you know obviously they're doing it to help the victims but you can imagine a lot of it is kind of um, help line their pockets in some way shape or form too all being said i still think this action from youtube is a little bit too far even if you think he's guilty i think convicting somebody or taking away their ability to earn on youtube and which it says in the title youtube suspend russell brand um, from advert income is a little bit over the top that is where i do agree with the idea that unless you're tried in a court of law or unless you're you know convicted you shouldn't have stuff like your YouTube AdSense taken away from you. That doesn't make any sense because at the moment, these are just allegations. They are very disturbing. Um, they're obviously very unsettling when you read some of the details and whatnot, but they're still allegations. And until they've been uh, thoroughly investigated and shit, YouTube and other places shouldn't go this quickly to kind of taking people's monetizations away, especially somebody of a Russell Brand's level, because you'd imagine the videos that he gets with millions of views even with his even with limited monetization he's probably seeing a lot of income from youtube on a monthly basis so to take that away is a little bit too much for me it's a step too far and if anything what it does is that it takes away from the validity and the severity of the actual allegations because now you're going to get all those people out there who are already conspiratorial who already think this is some big massive concerted effort by the powers that be to silence him because he's so anti-establishment all those people are now going to latch onto this because this is a valid concern that the most even the most hardened anti-russell brand person will be like you know what that's maybe a step too far because it does just it does concede that you think he's guilty youtube should have maybe carried on their own internal investigation maybe asked to examine some of the extra materials from that channel 4 documentary something to come to that decision by just reacting based off the outrage online and based off the documentary and then making such you know harsh decisions is a little bit too far especially when somebody hasn't been charged with a crime or hasn't been found guilty of anything if they came out and said hey we suspended his income or his adsense because our advertisers were threatening to pull away that's one thing it's a private business do what you like but it does sound like they have decided to make a moral or a principled decision and take away his adsense because of what's going on and if you go down that path it becomes a slippery slope because i bet you there are many people who have allegations on their name who are still monetized on philippine youtube a big example being probably crystalia I bet Chris Lear's channel hasn't been, you know, suspended monetization and he's been accused of loads of heinous things as well. He's got scores of victims out there, different accounts, loads of documentaries, but he still be able to kind of do his thing on YouTube and earn money on there. So I'm not really liking where this is going, but I guess again, to kind of center this, because I feel like there's way too much people out there doing mad conspiracy theory spin. This is also a sign that the guy was definitely a bit of a cunt and i've got some articles to read to you after i read through this that kind of show it and i think that ability to be a cunt is now coming back to bite him in the ass he maybe he's not a cunt anymore but i think his entire come up in in in, in england entertainment industry um has been one where he has displayed his cuntiness 
and a lot of people have had a lot of bad will against him there's people out there that like i'm because i don't pay much attention to the guy nowadays back in the day i did but i guess there was a lot of people out there that legitimately dislike russell for legitimate reasons they have interactions with him they've heard stories from their friends bloody blah 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 but there was a lot of ill feeling out there about him and i've seen many people on social who are involved in the entertainment industry and the comedy scene here in england clapping and applauding that he finally got what was coming to him essentially so that again goes back to what i've said in previous streams where if there's any lesson to be learned from this from men don't be a cunt and treat women that you're dating or even fucking with the utmost, utmost respect try and make that experience as pleasurable as you can it doesn't mean because you're about to smash and dash that you just have to be a fucking you know an ogre or a piece of shit about it you can still treat them well and you will avoid all of these issues but if you don't you believe in your own smoke your hubris remains undefeated your ego is out of this moon or out of this kind of universe or stratosphere whatever it may be then you're going to be in trouble so let's read the article it says youtube has suspended russell brand's channel from making money from adverts uh, for violating his creative responsibility policy the video platform said it was taking an action to protect its users meanwhile the bbc said it had removed some pro Programs featuring a comedian and the actor from a streaming service yeah but that's a problem though you guys platformed them that's why i don't think they really want to talk about this in depth because if they talk about this in depth they're going to have to accept that they were somewhat complicit in you know russell brand's absolute heinous crimes over the years alleged heinous crimes over the years because he that's the only way he was able to do it because he kept these you know high-flying jobs he was protected because he was somewhat beneficial to the people that own these places or own these sorry networks and these stations and stuff and he was making them a bunch of money so he was he was worthy of protecting now he isn't they're trying to throw him to the wolves but if you're going to throw him to the wolves you also have to throw the people that created the systems in which he was able to run amok but they won't do that. It's either just a point at one person who obviously is a bit of a monster from what we heard, but I just would want it to be something that was a little bit more, um, it covered a more, uh, covered a lot more people, but it obviously won't because, you know, people just like to find their one flipping boogeyman and kind of go from there. So it continues. Says, Meanwhile, the BBC said they removed the programs. It comes after he was accused of rape and sexual assaults in between 20, 2006 and 2013. The BBC says, said it removed some content and now falls below public expectations. Early this Tuesday, YouTube person said if creators of platform behavior harms our users employees or ecosystem we can take actions but that's the thing though this this is behavior that's been alleged nothing has been he's not been found guilty of it like making the decision based on alleged behavior is odd but then i guess that's probably what people would say when they say like um having a content career or being somebody that makes money on the internet is a privilege not a right some people do say that because these are private platforms that have these monetizations, um, monetization options. So if they do, you have to be aware of how that can negatively impact you if you do get caught in a passer. But sometimes you can get caught in the madness and it's not your fault. So what then? What then? You have to kind of sit out and not earn for a, a protracted period of time while this is going on. If anything, the ability to earn money on these type of platforms is super crucial if you do go for a passer because you can essentially say your piece, you can raise funds for your defense, whatever it may be. It's probably the most crucial time you'll need it. But again, I think in Russell Brand's case, he was that much of a piece of shit that companies like YouTube and individuals couldn't wait to kick him off. They couldn't wait because of how much bad will he built up over the years it continues in recent years the former tv and personality radio personality has repositioned himself posting regular videos about spirituality and anti-establishment politics recently ufos to his 6.6 .6 million subscribers and also posts on x for millionaires twitter and rumble youtube's decision to block his revenue stream applies to all channels that may have owned or operated by the 48 year old it confirmed other channels associated with his youtube page includes awakening with russell stay free with russell and football is nice which have about 500 subscribers between them jesus man he was raking it in on youtube isn't it sarah um Corquedo, author and chief executive of social media analyst agency cork estimate that uh, um, russell made between 2000 to 4000 per video so he's probably clearing like what 50k 60k he was probably making more revenue from youtube than the other platform everything existed to drive people towards his youtube channel so probably it was a significant revenue stream that has obviously now been paused and i think it's over the top i don't think you should do that i think if somebody has been accused of something and or unless they until they get charged i think that's why i i, I kind of like the football model as toxic as it can be and unsettling for us as fans i think the professional football model of until you get charged until you get charged 
or maybe even convicted sometimes, there is no stopping you playing football. You can still play football. And I think that's the only way to kind of deal with these things because if there's a criminal investigation out there, cool, you do it. But then if you're found innocent, for instance, what do you then want to do? You want that person to be sitting on the sidelines for two years while the case gets done. They should be allowed to earn money while the case is still going on like any other regular person would. If you had an open case on you, um, you could still go out there and have your job. Maybe your job won't want to have you, but you could still go and find another job. So I think that should always be on the cards. But it's hard to defend a guy like this because he's clearly built up a lot of ill will over the years. People have clearly been waiting to kind of bring him down and even though he felt like he changed people didn't give a fuck and i think what it shows is that this whole like you know wanting to change your life and hoping people forgive you type of thing is a bit odd when you don't admit your faults and i know it's hard to admit your faults because when you admit your faults it's basically an admission of guilt but i think his unwillingness to kind of really come you know let him lay himself bare and admit all the dark things he may have done in the past hasn't given anybody any sense of peace and it's been tormenting them especially think of that 16 year old girl i don't know how old she is now but that's something that she still hold held held on to all these years that's obviously brought her a lot of pain and that she was willing to share on the program so he's definitely damaged and hurt and left a trail of so many broken people in lives and shit so it's no surprise that comically he's receiving this type of retribution when he was on the top of the world a couple of weeks ago and all of a sudden it's all kind of come crashing down it kind of is what it is and it goes back to what i said before try not to be a cunt and in an effort to try not to be a cunt or you know to kind of talk about that this is an account from a london or sorry a comedian called london hughes who had an experience with russell brand and this again is another example as to maybe why Russell Brand is in actual trouble. Forget the fucking anti-establishment shit. Forget all that nonsense. But if this is how you behave to people who are in your industry, who are meant to be your peers, who are meant to be your colleagues, this obviously is an example of just how much of a cunt and a piece of shit Russell Brand was, unfortunately. Because again, I was a fan of him too. I found him charming and funny on TV shows and hosting things and whatnot. I found his, his autobiography to be incredibly illuminating and interesting. Even the passages about the sex addiction was not glamorous if you've actually read these autobiography you know it kind of sounds depressing it almost sounds a little bit sickening the way he was always horny and he had to turn every relationship he had with a woman into sex there was accounts in that book of him smashing literal old ladies like literal oaps he would have sex with just to kind of satiate his needs and shit so it didn't sound like it was a good thing to be a sex addict it kind of sounded like a curse to me so that book was really illuminating it kind of opened my eyes to that side of things obviously drug abuse and shit and he was a cool guy but i never really checked for him since then i've not really paid much in mind but clearly in that whole time he pissed off a lot of people in his industry comedians other tv post Catherine ryan said something about him back in the day and now it's coming back again i heard of vanessa felt's articles come back again talking about her bad interactions so many women and people have come out and basically said that guy's a wanker 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 and this person called london hughes has said the same thing as well and this account is again proof that maybe russell is in big trouble because he just didn't treat people nice so london hughes says as follows I was newly signed to Russell's agent at the height of my career. I was a huge fan of the man, so excited to meet him. But my first day at the agency, I was told unprovoked, I was told unprovoked that I shouldn't sleep with him under any circumstances as he likes to pursue women and have sex with them. Imagine it's your first day signed to Russell's agency. He's a big star, big celebrity. He was a big deal in the UK here. People don't understand how much of a big celebrity and a star Russell was. He didn't obviously fish fill his potential because of all this fuck shit. We're now learning. I am anyway, because I always wondered why didn't he fulfill his potential? We're now learning because of this fuck shit he did in the background. You know, usually in the entertainment industry, there is a there is a kind of function that kind of weeds out all the dickheads. So if you if you don't see somebody on TV for often, no, most likely they probably fell off because they're shit or because they're a dickhead. So we can kind of see why, you know, Russell Brand's career kind of went the way it went because, you know, the industry said, no, thank you. You're too much of a dickhead. London Hughes continues. But as soon as he had sex with them, they'd made him feel sick and he didn't want to be around them anymore. This is the fucked up shit. So he would have them fired or dropped from the agency. It happened several times in the past and I was 22 at the time and did what I was told and completely avoided him. This is not some cheeky misunderstood man. I'm not shocked by the documentary at all. I believe everything those brave women said. So imagine how much of a piece of shit you are anyway. I'm, in my opinion, this is just something I'm going to say out loud and I'm hoping I'm not going to regret it, but I think this is true. 
I think if you're somebody as prominent as a Russell, you probably should avoid fucking your co-workers or the staff members you work with. Especially if you're that kind of guy. You should probably draw a line and say, in this building, this is where everybody can feel safe. There is no like, you know, sex between the flopping. It's going to happen anyway, but no relationships. You try and make it as a professional environment as possible and a safe place for people just to come and work and have fun. None of that nonsense goes there because you're in such a position of power or of influence. It just creates a weird dynamic. Like even if you're a good guy and you end up fucking two people on your staff, it just makes it awkward for everybody. So to avoid all that, I'd put a hard and fast rule. No fucking my colleagues, no fucking my employees, no fucking my team. That's it, right? Draw a line there. Don't do it. But if you do do it, don't do this. Don't then make it awkward and be like, oh, I can't look at you anymore because I just blew your back out the other day. Like you're making me feel sick, which is a horrendous thing to say to somebody and then get them fired from a dream role. I remember when I was first coming up and I first had an interest in getting into TV and shit, the one job everybody was kind of vying for was being a runner. And those jobs, even though it's the most lowest job I think you could get to kind of get yourself into working in TV or the entertainment industry, they were so hard to come by because everybody was fighting for them because everybody knew that those were usually the first step or the, you know, the way to kind of get in the door um, and kind of go from there. And they were hard to get. So I can only imagine how hard other jobs being a producer and being at that kind of level where you're working with Russell Brand, all these type of different agencies and shit, it's probably really difficult. And even to get recognized by agencies and have them sign you, it's really hard. So once they do, and then he gets you fired, that is a real big blow to your career that could be something that you probably will never recover from because the entertainment industry like sports it moves quickly do you know what I mean there's always a next person coming up there's always a hot young guy or girl coming up or you know if you think you're the most charismatic there's another charismatic kid on tiktok now doing things there's always somebody coming up in the background that's going to take your spot while you're out so somebody firing you at that stage of your career when you're young 22 just figuring shit out it could have some very long lasting consequences for your career overall so it's no surprise that all of these people imagine all of these trails of people these broken hurt people he's he's kind of affected over the years they're the ones that are probably out there putting out all this bad karmic energy around him which is what basically led to the documentary not some shadowy cabal of influential people in the establishment trying to you know remind him who's boss no it's just loads of people that he hurt over the years some of them way more than others in terms of assaults and rapes and shit and just being a fucking dickhead to girls that it's led to this that's basically it and you know i as unfair as it is for his youtube monetization to get paused reading all these accounts what does you expect do you know what i mean there's a lot of ill will out there for him but i just feel like going forward there should be a process in place where if you're if you've innocent you're innocent to proven guilty obviously and you should be maybe treated that way you shouldn't be put in a position where you're not able to make money because you've been accused of something it's an accusation it might be heinous the evidence might be compelling but until you are tried in a court of law and you're found guilty or something you shouldn't be you know your ability to make money and put food on the table and whatever should be taken away from you if anything there should be more of an onus on the fans there should be maybe more onus on the fans. Like, why are you supporting him? Da, 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 da. Put it on the fans. Put the If the fans decide to cancel you and don't want to watch you after your accusations, that's their prerogative, right? But it shouldn't be these in instruments or these institutions in our society or whatever that should be coordinating an attack and say, okay, cool, because you've been accused, you're done and you're out of here. That is a bit weird. It's a bit of a slippery slope. Obviously, it's, it's easy to do with somebody like Russell Brand because what he's been accused of is obviously awful and no one's going to stand here and kind of try and defend it. But it's just, it just leaves a bit of a bad taste in their mouth. But then also to, talking about leaving a bad taste in their mouth, I've also wondered, I've also seen, and I'm also part of it, when this stuff happens, it is quite, it is quite lucrative for people, isn't it? Because it gets loads of eyes and you know on your stuff it makes people you know watch your shit whatever it may be but it definitely is a little micro industry in itself because i've seen tons of people out there who are doing the whole i stand with russell thing right obviously i saw anna cashin from red scare say that andrew tate stood by him elon musk has stood by him uh ben shapiro you know not, not the greatest cast of people i think kate hopkins not the greatest cast of people but still people have stood out there and defended him and i feel like a lot of it just you're defending him because you know more than likely it's just going to bring you a lot of attention because most people are going to side with the victims so because you stand down you're a contrarian people are going to want to you know give you a dressing down and tell you what's what which inevitably will make you 
more famous and make you more viral which will definitely help your career going forward so it is quite self-serving and i've seen it happening a lot it's turned into its own little micro economy it's little scene and obviously it works on the other end too people like myself who are trying to be nuanced and balanced about it you're also going to get your own audience off the back of that too so everybody's kind of playing this weird game you know where it's not really about the victims it's all kind of about you 